Hey, Shabbat Shalom Mishpacha. Welcome to another edition of Torah Tidbits. This is Torah Tidbits installment number 10. And it's called Mechetz, which means at the end, or Mechetz, which means at the end, taken from Bereshit, Genesis chapter 41, all the way to chapter 44, verse 11. Now, in this uh, Torah portion, we find uh, you know that uh, Pharaoh has two dreams in which the interpretation is basically one and the same. The first dream, uh, which he sees seven healthy cows are cannibalized by seven sickly cows. The second dream Pharaoh has, he sees full uh, seven full ears of corn or wheat, depending on which translation you're using, and uh, they are consumed by seven withered, dried up ears, meaning that there will be seven years of bounty and plenty and uh, immediately following them, they will be seven years of famine so severe that the plenty uh, of the seven years prior will not be remembered. It'll be forgotten like it never happened. So these true dreams are like two confirming witnesses and follows the Torah protocol where um, by the word of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. So Yosef, uh, Joseph is summoned and interprets the dreams and is taken basically from rags to riches, from prison to the palace. He becomes uh, basically the vice president of Egypt. He becomes second next to only Pharaoh. So there comes a famine uh, in, uh, in the land of Israel where, where, where Israel, Jacob, and his remaining sons are. And uh, so he sends his son, minus Benjamin, uh, Rachel's last child, to go to Egypt to buy food to sustain Israel's entire household. And of course they must see Joseph, who is un unrecognizable to his brothers because he's clothed as an Egyptian ruler. So his brothers are forced to, to humbly submit themselves in fulfilling Joseph's prior dreams of the, 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 uh, the um, sheaves of wheat bowing down to him and the sun, moon, and stars bowing down to him. And uh, so, you know, and that's kind of just like today uh, with Yeshua. Um, he's been clothed in pagan Christian apparel and has become unrecognizable to uh, his Jewish kin and is just one of many reasons why Jews don't accept this Jesus, this Christian Jesus as the Messiah. Yet Joseph immediately recognized his brothers. His brothers bowed down to him and uh, as, I, as I said, fulfilled these dreams. And uh, um, Joseph accused, um, his brothers bowed down to him, fulfilling Joseph's teenage dreams, as I mentioned before. Um, Joseph accused them of being spies and made them divulge the welfare of, of you know, his father and, the, and his youngest brother to prove that they were not spies. So Shimon is imprisoned while the others return home with full packs of food. They were, uh, they were not to return unless they returned with Benjamin. Um, you know, so eventually they had to do that. So when they arrived, Joseph's emotions in seeing um, his only one true brother when they returned again and returned with Benjamin and Shimon, Simon, is released, um, he's overwhelmed with emotion and he goes away weeping. Um, and he ends up showing his own flesh and bro blood brother uh, favor by giving him a double portion at the meal they had with with you know Israel's sons. Um, but Yo uh, but Joseph hides uh, his goblet in Benjamin's saddlebag and then sends guards to apprehend his brothers and bring them back to Egypt with the intention of making Benjamin stay with him um, since he was the one with with the cup found in his bag. But uh, you know we see that that doesn't happen and eventually um, Joseph. Uh, reveals himself uh, as, you know, as Joseph, as his his brother, as their brother, and uh, you know, we as Netzari Messianic believers today, it behooves us. It's our responsibility to derobe this Christian, Gentile, Greco-Roman Jesus, strip him of of you know the blonde hair, blue eyes you know, the, the Kenny Loggins look uh, in the toga-wearing Jesus and show Judaism that Yeshua is the Jewish Messiah, that he kept the Torah, that he wore a talit, that he, that, he, that he dressed as a Jew, ate like a Jew, lived like a Jew, looked like a Jew, that he was a Jew, he, he was born a Jew, and he died a Jew, and he's returning again as a Jew with the name on his thigh according to Revelation that no man knew which is, you know, the zitzit hanging on his thigh representing the unpronounceable name of, of 
you know, yud he vav he of God Almighty. And so we need to show our Jewish brothers and sisters, our non-believing Jewish brothers and sisters, you know, who Yeshua really is. We need to take off the Egyptian garb and reveal that Yeshua is, is you know, their brother, that he is the divine Messiah of Israel. Hopefully you enjoyed this tour portion and got something new out of it. And uh, tune in again next time, and we'll see you later. Shalom and Shavuot Tov Mishpokah.